everyone. Welcome to episode four of the Batty Knitter podcast, a podcast that's mainly about knitting. I'm your host, Shella, and I come to you from Gatineau, Quebec, and from my home that I share with my husband, three cats, and our dog. So you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram, both under the name of the Batty Knitter. So now that's that's out of the way. Now oh, that beginning intro is always really awkward. Every single podcaster out there, I think, finds their intro <laughs> awkward. So it's been a while since uh, we've talked. So I do have a huge <laughs> pile of stuff. I think the last time was even before Halloween. Uh, what should I start with? Let's start with some FOs. The first thing that I finished. Well, let's see if I can dig them out of the pile are my Halloween socks. So I did finish them, these in time for Halloween, so I was we- it was pretty cold on Halloween, so I was wearing them while we were passing out uh, candy to the trick-or-treaters. So they're a little bit dirty because I've been wearing them a lot since I finished them. So the pattern is by Jen, I think it's Mew, Mew, Moomy? Moomy? <laughs> I'll uh, I'll put the I'll put the name up on the on the screen and it'll also be in the show notes. Let's see if I can show you the pattern that's on top here. So it's called Bad Moon Rising because you can see it's a little bit hard to see because it's black yarn, but there's little moons. The little cables make these little moons. The black here is um, some sock yarn. I think it was eighty twenty that I hand dyed black and it's got Stellina in it a little bit too. This, the, the heel toe cuff is Volmeisa. The toe is a Clementine. The heel is Lavendel and the cuff is Wasabi. So these are probably my favorite socks I've ever made. I really like a tight, tight sock, especially around my foot. I find most knitted socks will, um, they get loose right away and I, and I don't I don't mind a sock that slips down my leg but I hate a sock that's loose around my foot and I've got a very narrow I've got a long foot but a narrow foot because of the cables on these it really pulls in the fabric and it makes it tight but still but still stretchy so they're not hard to put on but they stay on so I think from now on I'll be knitting if I knit socks I'll be knitting a lot of them with cables in them I really 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 love these and I highly recommend it and I believe it's a free pattern so that's really great and um, I have a hard time following directions written directions so I made a little chart for the um, cable pattern and with the designers permission I posted a link to that in my um, on my Ravelry project page so there's the first FO there are a few including sweaters (laughs) The next is my Raichuli hat that I've knit out of Nerd Girl yarns and which I can't for the life of me remember the colorway names. So it was a, a kit of two smaller skeins. One's purple, one's green. And she doesn't sell these anymore and I, it's been so long. There you go. I love this hat. I really love how the uh, the decreases are done in a little. It's hard to see, but they're done in a sort of swirly, swirly pattern. See, I love that that swirl. I find it looks really nice. So this is Raituli, by 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 by. Marja Mar- Marja Maria, Suomela. <laughs> Very bad at pronouncing. So I'll. Again, everything will be in the show notes. Uh, next is another hat. It is the pull the wool over hat that is Pastrico published. And guys, I am in love with this hat. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's a little bit loose. So it was fine. It was fine when I finished it, but I blocked it a little bit too aggressively, so I might uh, I might try to block it again. And a big pom pom. So the the funny thing about the pom pom is that this is 
I don't know if you've noticed, but in, in teenagers, the, it's a big trend to have these fur pom-poms on their, on their purses. This is actually one of those. It's just so much, it was only $4. It is so much cheaper than buying a pom-pom at a yarn store that I just, uh, I took off the, it was the exact same elastic as my other pom-pom that I had. So I just used it. I took off the little keychain part and sewed it on. The yarn on this is Lichen and Lace Superwash, which is their 100% merino base in soot. And the it's double stranded with some Lusso by Lang Yarns, which is an absolutely lovely mohair. So it's merino, silk, camel, and mohair. It's so soft. I just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it on for a little bit. <laughs> it's cold. So yeah, I really love this and it. I thought it was funny that I used a super cheap pom-pom, but it looks just as good as the expensive ones, especially if you're talking about fake fur. I mean, real fur, I, I get paying the more expensive amount, but fake fur, really? I'm not paying $20, $30 for that. Uh, next, 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 next. I finished the pom-pom crop. So this is the pom-pom crop by Annie Lupton. I'd been looking for a nice um, crop, so it's pretty short. I've been, I'd been looking for a nice crop sweater, and my friend Selma, who's the, who has the Little Big Knits podcast, uh, showed me this pattern, and I fell in love and immediately cast it on. It fits fantastic. The neckline is absolutely beautiful. That v-neck, the way it's made, it's so pretty and flattering. The yarns are just uh, Cascade 220 throughout and then in the body I held it double with some mohair which is sweater kits silk whisper mohair so the the brand is sweater kits I got this at the twist festival last year it was really inexpensive and it's really lovely so I've worn it already a couple of times and it's warm without without making me overheated I think maybe because it's cropped and I love the short rows in the back. So it's a little bit longer in the back. It's really, really cute. Um, there, there's a picture on my Instagram if you want to see me wearing it. Love it. And I think this is my last FO. So I just... Okay, it's not an FO. It's sort of almost a hoe. Because the ends aren't woven in yet and it's not blocked. Um, Suzanne Summer was, uh, designed this and she was looking for test knitters and I said, eh, you know, I'll try it out. And, uh, she, she picked me amongst many, many people to test knit her sweater. And guys, this thing is amazing. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Let's see if I can put it on for you. It's not blocked. Oh geez, not a good idea over it. A shawl. <laughs> oh. All right, big Bess. So this is it. It's got this, these big bat wing sleeves, which I'm super in love with. It's not my usual colors, but with the black around, around, and around the bottom, I find that it ends up looking really nice. And it's not blocked, so it is going to be a little bit longer in the body. So right now it just comes up to here. But I'll try to block it to get, to, to get a little tiny bit more length. I feel like it should be a teensy, teensy bit longer. So this pattern, okay, I always knew gauge was important, but this pattern definitely taught me the importance of gauge especially the difference between gauge knit in the flat and gauge knit in the round. So I always thought that my gauge was the same. Whether I knit in the round or flat, it's never been a problem before. But with this sweater, because of the fact that it's knit this way, and the sleeves down, and the fact that the pattern goes by rows and not inches, so it doesn't tell you to knit so much until so many inches, it goes by rows, I had a bit of a difficult time with it. 
but that's only because my gauge was wrong. The pattern was beautifully written. Even, even considering it was uh, just a test knit pattern, it was really, really well written. So you knit it this way and then you, you do the, you do the sleeves. So when I finished this, I barely had three quarter sleeves. The, the first sleeve, it was about here. It was way too short. It looked nice, but it, I really wanted a nice, cozy, long sleeve sweater, something that you can, you know, you're cold and you can really just bundle up in. And this is perfect, this is it. So I redid, I added a whole lot more rows in between my decrease rows, and that ended up fixing my gauge issues. So my gauge from the flat was a little bit off. Oh, I'm out of focus. Yeah, so my gauge from knitting flat was a little bit off, but not enough to really be a problem, especially that this sweater has about 14 inches of uh, positive ease. So I wasn't too worried about the, the sweater being too short body-wise to this way. But it did end up being a problem in the sleeves, but that was a really easy fix even though it was a pain in the butt to have to frog a bunch of work, it was easy to just add on a bunch of rows. I'm covered in fluff now. The yarn is Ilamani Amelie. Oh, I forgot the label. Ah, there we go. This is the label. Is it gonna focus? There we go. So it's made out of uh, silk, baby alpaca, and merino. And guys, it's heaven. It's it's light and fuzzy. And apart from the breathing in the fuzzes and getting them caught all over my face, it's really really nice to wear. And it's warm. Every every time I tried it on to see if it was to see my progress, I didn't want to take it back off again. So this sweater should be out before the holidays. And I highly, highly recommend this pattern if you're looking for a nice, comfortable, slouchy, crop kind of sweater. Really recommend this one. I really enjoyed knitting it. I learned so, so, so much while I was knitting it. I'd never done that kind of construction in a sweater. I actually haven't done a lot of sweaters. And I'm definitely into the sweater zone lately, finishing those two. And I still have my timeless Henley on the needles, but that's uh, that's getting close to completion as well. But right now I'm, well, I guess I can jump into whips. I have cast on another sweater. So the one, the uh, test knit, I knit that in a week. Yeah, that was a little crazy. I can't believe I finished that in one week. The, that, yeah. Of course, I finish one sweater in a week. What do I want to do? Finish another sweater in a week. So I've cast on the Yulgran. Yul I think it's Yulgran by Andy Satterland. Satterland. This is my teeny tiny beginning in this beautiful green yarn that I've dyed myself. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast. And focus a little bit. There you go. So I love how tonal it is. I'll show you the pattern. I have it right here. So here's the pattern. So the reason why I'm hoping to knit it in one week is I have my first Christmas party next Saturday. So I'm hoping, hoping. I like to challenge myself with this. If I don't get done, I don't get done. It'll probably, it's in a house, so it'll probably be too warm and I'll probably take it off after 10 minutes anyways. But I would like to get it done. We'll see. We'll try. So that's my first whip. I guess we've moved on to whips. <laughs> and what else? What else, what else, what else? Oh, I had brought this to show you the, uh, the palette cleanser. So this is what it looks like on her. So it's a little bit more loose than mine came out to be, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I don't have that many FOs right now. There's 
I'm, I've been mostly uh, mon monogamously knitting on stuff. I have picked back up. So these were in hibernation for a long, long, long time. But I've picked them back up again. And they are the Stone Hollow Mitts by Carol Sunday. I made a little bit of modifications because I wanted a really, really long mitt. I have a, um, a wool jacket and the sleeves are a bit too loose. So the wind just goes right up my, right up my sleeve. So I wanted to make these mittens and I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So this is definitely, definitely out of my comfort zone, but not completely because I do really like I like really bright colors. Here you can see the, uh, it's a sort of brioche waffle palm to make it a little bit warmer. This, this is Hedgehog Fibers, their Aran weight, and the colorway is Zephyr. I'm super, super in love. So I finished this one and I've cast on the next one, but that was before I got obsessed with my sweater <laughs> with the test knit. I think it's going to be called the palette cleanser, but she might change the name. Um, next. Oh, I didn't bring my timeless Henley. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. So even though this has been put aside since the last time I podcast, I did get a lot of it done. So I'll show you anyways, it's all tangled. So here it is. So because it's lace, it's very, uh, it's needs to be stretched out. I actually only need to do about an inch or two before the ribbing, the bottom ribbing. So I'm so close to being done. As soon as I'm done my Christmas sweater, I'm picking this back up again and finishing it. I'd like to get it done before the holidays. It's December 2nd, so I should be able to get it done before the holidays. I ordered some nine inch circulars to try to try for the sleeves so that it goes faster. I've tried nine inch circulars before and I find that they cramp my hands, but I'm gonna give them another go. See how that goes. And then, again, my friend Selma that I mentioned earlier of the Little Big Knits podcast, she recently finished a um, granny square blanket for her daughter and she was working on it um, when we were knitting together and I just fell really in love with it. So of course I had to start my own. Hers has a cream border, but of course I had, mine had to be black. So i show you a couple. I've only done a couple so far. So it's gonna, I'm gonna need about a hundred. And for this one, I'm using only yarns that I had knit with, so a true memories blanket. So it might take a couple of years because I don't have a hundred squares worth of leftovers. This one. This one, which you might recognize from my slice of light shawl. It's not focusing. Okay, well, whatever. And this one you might also recognize is from my Paris and Berlin shawl. And this one is one that I've hand dyed. And I realize now I didn't tell you the other ones. Um, oh, what is this one? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember this one. It's from my, it's from a shawl that I made. I can't remember. I'll pop it in. This is another one that I dyed myself. That was my first time experimenting with speckles. And I really, really liked the outcome. Uh, this one is Art Fill Solo and Hypnosis from my Slow Curves shawl. Some Halloween yarn from Log House Cottage. And that's it. Those are the ones I have so far. I'm using bits and bobs and I'm using some sand Niskarn for the bo bo border. I bought the wrong one. I meant to buy the sock one 
this one is just 100% merino so it wouldn't be quite as tough so I might switch it's just black black is pretty easy to match so it should be fine I think that's it for the whips future cast-ons well sweaters I'm obsessed with knitting sweaters right now and I also want to make normally don't swear too much in my pattern but in my podcast but I don't I also don't censor myself so I'm gonna be swearing I want to knit the coldest fuck mittens <laughs> Uh, and I bought some yarn just for that. So that's going to be uh, a cast on that's going to be happening really soon. And with that, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about my shawl that I am currently wearing. So this is the Exploration Station by Stephen West. I absolutely adore this shawl. It's so beautiful. It's big, but not as big as I was wanting it to be. But then again, it's my fault. I think I went down two or three needle sizes because I really hate really loose garter. So it's my fault that it's not as big as I wanted it to be. It's all Volmiza. The black is heavy metal. This is Volka. This one is Tobe and the purple is a Lila Ludmila Ludmila I uh, can't do a German accent but my original colors that I had picked out I tried to do fall colors and it ended up I'm so happy I swatched the colors it ended up ended up looking like a 70s era couch it was so ugly so ugly so it forced me to go back to my stash and stash dive and I am happy because I came out with this, which I am super, super happy with, very happy with. Uh, so last, last podcast, I talked about the Fluvog Knit Night that I went to, and uh, there was a draw. There was a door entry prize, whatever, and I won. I won. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. I doubt she'll ever see this, but <laughs> um, I will show you what I won. So it's a little bit of a, it's both, it's both fluvog and knitting swag. Sorry, some stuff spilled. Oh no, Sue, I said sorry. Inside joke. So it came in this lovely little bag. I forget who's the maker though. I'll have to ask Catherine. I'll ask Catherine and I'll put it in the show notes because it's a really, really cute bag. And in this bag, I got a whole bunch of um, Fluvog stickers. I like this one. These ones are my favorites. And this one, you look great. I had to put that one on my mirror, I think. I also got some postcards. I haven't opened these up. And these are, these are laces. These are Fluvog laces. I think these might be French, but I haven't opened them yet. They're really, really, I love this floral pattern. It's a nice dark floral pattern. I also got some pins that are written in French. These are the Know Your Weird pins in French. And these little mirrors. And that one means you, you are great. I also, I got a lot of a lot of swag in this. I got these little stitch markers. They're so cute. They're little seashells. And there's a little progress keeper. So there's about I think there's about ten in them of the seashells. And then there's this guy. 
just a little open clam with a pearl in it. There we go. So these ones are from Firefly Notes. And I'll have to put these back in the bag. There we go. I also got a pattern. So I'm just going to try to, I don't know, I don't know if it's a free pattern, so I'm just going to fold over. I got these, they're two different kinds of boot toppers, so these are one of them. Little, little bit of color work. And then there's the brioche ones. I'm probably going to make the brioche ones, I really like them. And last but not least, I got some yarn. So I don't know if these were already what was in the swag bag. I can't remember. But this matches exactly the shawl that I was wearing. Which is my starting point shawl by Hohi Locatelli. So yeah, it's, it's reds and grays and blacks like this. I think I showed it on my last podcast or one of my podcasts. I'm pretty sure I showed it. And up next, I have, so my Halloween and my birthday have passed since I've last podcast. My birthday was on November 13th. So I have a lot of acquisitions from that. So if you're not much of a wallpapery person, then you might, might not be interested in the next little segment. So first, my hubby brought me to Espace Tricot. We were already in Montreal for a concert. And so he brought me and he said, you know, within reason, go nuts. So I did. <laughs> so first off is this Madeline Tosh. It's 11 dark. And of course it's purpley, bluey, pinky color. That's really dark. And I love it so much. I really, really do. It's lovely. Next, I got Julie Asselin Merletto in the colorway Fusain. So it's just a dark gray. I was knitting my Boo Knits mystery knit along with another colorway, and I loved it so much that when I saw this gray, I just I had to have it as well. I'm still working on that, but it's been it's been put aside for the moment. pumpkin and then I got a bunch of Brooklyn Tweed Loft so I have projects in mind for these they were bought for a specific reason so these two are going to be a pair of Christmassy mitts if I get around to knitting them <laughs> Hopefully, if not for this year, then it'll be for next year. So the green is Artifact, and the red is Long John's. And then the gray and the blue are Iceberg and Cast Iron. So Iceberg is one of their new colorways. So these are going to be for make my cold as fuck mittens. So that was my Espace Tricot haul. I also, where did it go? Oh, I fell off earlier. I also got the yarn to make my pull the wool over hat. That was also part of my birthday wool piggery. And then there's going to be a lot of crinkling. Just hang on a second. Hubby surprised me with a pack, like a whole bunch of yarn. I think there's seven in here, six in here. So this is from Whimsical Wood Yarn Company. And it was what she calls her poo packs. 
and it's the Halloween one. Really doesn't want to focus, eh? And there we go. So this one is Witch Poo. Look at that speckly amazingness. Like, really, a really amazing. Then, this one is Bat Poo. They're all speckly like this. And I have no idea what I'm going to make with all of them. But they are gorgeous. This is Pumpkin Poo. Franken poo. Dracula poo. Nope. Oh, this game came undone. And then my favorite, this is Ghost Poo. I am super, in, I don't know how she does to layer on these speckles so beautifully. I gotta try to replicate this. It's amazing. It's, oh, it's fantastic. I love it. And my parents got me this 100 knits I'm absolutely in love with this I want to knit 99% of the sweaters that are in here so 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 beautiful I can't ah, I can't wait can't wait can't wait to dig into this next year I think is going to be a garment year I'm just going to knit sweaters Knit, knit, knit. Always have a sweater on on my needles. Um, I also wanted to talk about a little bit about my hand dyed yarns. So I've been I've been dyeing a little bit. I ordered some more dyes from Dharma Trading, which, with the shipping and exchange rate to Canada, let's just say ouch. <laughs> so the first one is this green that I talked about earlier that I dyed for my Yule Crown sweater. So this is going to be for my quick Christmas sweaters. It's a dark, dark green. I don't know if it shows up so well for you guys. It's a little bit brighter than I want it to, to be, but I'm still really happy with the tonal quality of it. And then a couple weeks before I dyed two more greens, I'm, I seem to be obsessed with dyeing greens. So this one, which is a black frosted green. And then this one kind of goes with it. So I tried my hand at reverse speckling. So you can see there's little, little points, little tiny bits of color in here. This one was really fun to, to try out and dye. And my last one I've done is this one. I am really, really in love with that one. I tried speckling again with a different method and I really, really enjoyed it. And I really liked the results. The little tiny speckles, which is exactly what I was going for. And then that's it for the knitting. Um, do you have a little bit of a random, random corner? I got myself an, well, I got myself. Hubby bought it for my birthday. But I got a little advent calendar. So this is from Curiology. Look at that beautiful image, eh? Really beautiful. So what this is, is it's a bunch of pendants. 
So every day you open it up and it's a different pendant. It came with three, three necklaces. So you get a little white ribbon one, a little chain, and a black organza one that I'm wearing. So spoiler alert in case you in case you also have this by some chance, but by the time it's edited and published, it will probably be quite a few days into it. So I'll show you what I've gotten so far. First day. So far, I'm really happy. I've only opened two, but we also had a little spoiler just to show a little bit what was in it. And I've loved everything I've seen. This is the first day. It's a little druzy. Moogie's climbing into a box. We put up the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree box is still out. So the cat just jumped in. So it's a really beautiful blue green stone. And then day two, I'm actually wearing because we are the second today. So I don't know if I'll be able to, I guess I could take it off. Let's see if I could take this off. I am really, really, really in love with this one. It's the moon phases and it's cut out of some sparkly plastic, I guess. They're laser cut pendants. Most of them are laser cut pendants. I think there's two or three uh, silver pendants, like the one I got on day one, and the rest are going to be laser cut like this. And this is the other, the other necklace that we got to put them on. So, so far I'm really, really happy and it was actually a pretty decent, pretty decent price for it. If you're interested in seeing these, I will be posting them in my Instagram stories every day. All right, so I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please, please subscribe and like the show. And if you have any comments, please uh, leave them below. Thanks. Bye.